hello. Uh, today we're going to review question words and then we're going to study noun clauses. And first, let's learn some new vocabulary. A camp. A camp. A camp is a place where young people go to relax and take part in activities, often as part of an organization. For example, Boy Scouts. A tent. A tent. A tent is a shelter consisting of a sheet of cloth supported by poles and ropes, and it's used by campers, people who camp. Now, to put up a tent is called to pitch a tent. A stake. A stake. A stake is a pointed piece of wood or metal pushed into the ground with a rope tied to it. It's used to hold up a tent. We have an axe. An axe. An axe is a tool with a heavy metal blade on the end of a long handle, and it's used to cut down trees. A hatchet. A hatchet. This is a small axe with a short handle. A campfire. A campfire. This is a fire made outdoors by people who are camping. Okay, now we have a marshmallow. A marshmallow. Marshmallow is a very light, soft, sweet, and it's usually white or pink. We can roast marshmallows over a campfire. It's a very popular campfire activity. A lantern. A lantern is a lamp that campers carry. It's made of metal or glass. Uh, it's a metal or glass container surrounding a flame or a light. It can be electric or it can be uh, with actually something burning. A sleeping bag. A sleeping bag. This is a large warm bag that unrolls for campers to sleep in. And here we have a hammock. A hammock. A hammock is a thing for sleeping in or sleeping on. It's a long piece of cloth or net and it's hung between two trees or two poles or bars or anything you can hang something between. Okay, over here we can put a grill. A grill. A grill is a flat frame with metal bars across it. It can be put over a fire so that food can be placed on top and cooked quickly. A lifeguard. A lifeguard. This is a person who works at a camp to help swimmers who are in danger. A raft. A raft. A raft is a, fa a flat floating structure that you can sit on or you can jump from it when you are swimming. An inner tube. An inner tube. This is an air-filled rubber tube used to sit on or stand on in the water. You actually find this on the inside of a car tire and people use it to swim with. Okay, next we have a bow. A bow. A bow is a weapon. It's made of a long, thin, curved piece of wood. And with a bow, you always need an arrow. This is a thin, straight stick with a point on one end, and you shoot it from the bow. A target. A target. A target is a round board with colored circles on it. You practice shooting with a target. Now, the place where you have many targets is called an archery range. Two more have a rowboat. A rowboat. It's a small boat that you move through the water with using oars. And what are oars? O-A-R-S, oars. These are long pieces of wood. With, they're flat at the ends, and you use them to row a rowboat. Let's go over these words once again. A camp, a tent, a stake, an axe, a hatchet, a campfire, a marshmallow, a lantern, a sleeping bag, and a hammock. Okay, over here we have a grill, a lifeguard, and a raft. 
an inner tube, a bow and an arrow, a target, a rowboat, and finally, oars. Question words. Okay, let's start our lesson and let's begin with the review of question words. Now we're going to divide our question words into two groups. We'll have W question words and then we'll have the how question words. How question words. Well, let's begin with the review of the W question word. Here are some examples for you to look at. The first one, when did they build the campfire? Where are the stakes for the tent? Why didn't Alice bring an inner tube for herself? Whose inner tube will she use? Which raft do you want to swim to? And who will buy marshmallows? Each of these sentences begins with a W question word. We have when, and this is for time. We have where, and this is for place. We have why, this is for a reason. We have whose, whose is for possession. Right. We also have which. We use which for choosing. Choosing from a group, if we know how many, a definite quantity in a group, we want to know which one. So choosing from a group. And we have who, which is a subject word. Can be a subject or an object word. And it's for people. Subject or an object for people. And last, we also have one more. We have this one, whom. Whom is very formal. It's a subject, uh, an object question of who. For example, if I could have for whom will you buy marshmallows. We had the subject question, who will you buy, who will buy the marshmallows? The object question is, for whom will you buy the marshmallows? This is the subject, this is the object. So it's very formal. Okay, now these question words can be used with all verb tenses, and they can also be used in the middle of an indirect question. Let's have a look at some indirect questions now. Could you tell me when the campfire was built? Would you tell me where the stakes for the tent are? Okay, let's practice these now. Let's start with a review of question words beginning with W. And I want you to go around twice like, and asking each other W questions. Okay, Rosa, you can begin. I guess you'll be asking Monica, and then Monica will ask Lewis, Lewis, Rosa, and again. This is simple. Monica, when did you go to a camp first? I first went to a camp uh, when I was 16. It was like a Girl Scouts camp. It was fun, and there were lots of handsome boys. Oh, really? Rosa, where will your niece go to uh, camp next year? She will go to a beautiful camp uh, on a big lake. They will sleep in big tents. Louise, why didn't you go to a camp when you were a child? There aren't many camps in Portugal. Only the rich kids go. Uh, Monica, yeah. who did you meet at your camp? I met my best friend Krista. She's a very good person. Rosa, yeah. whose bikini did you wear at camp? We couldn't wear bikinis, silly girl. Louise, which camp did you want to go to? I wanted to go to a camp near the border of Spain. It was in Primus. Yeah. Very good, everyone. That was an excellent job. Okay, so now, which will you do? Look or listen? I think both. 
look and listen. When does the camp bus leave for the lake? Where are the grills for the barbecues? Could you tell me why Greg didn't want to come to camp this summer? Who are those children in the tent? Read and repeat. Now, of course, there is one more question word that begins with W, and that is, of course, what. So let's have a look at questions beginning with this W question word. Here's an example. What made the children in that tent ill? Now, in this sentence, we have what as a subject. Here's another example. What did Sean put in the rowboat? In this sentence, we have what as an object. Sean put what in the rowboat? What did Sean put? Uh, next sentence, what kind of lanterns should I bring? Now, in this sentence, we have what kind, and this means a particular variety or a particular type. Particular variety or type. What kind of lanterns? Big, small, uh, electrical, or just flame? Okay, now we've got another sentence here. What are the children doing in the water after nine o'clock? This is what plus a form of do. What are the children doing? Present continuous. And we use this to talk or ask about activities. Right, another sentence here. What inner tubes did Lance bring? In this sentence we have what plus a noun. What inner tubes did Lance bring? And they must go together. It must be what and then inner tubes or the noun together. Okay, another sentence. What is Camp Babcock Hovey like? Okay, in this sentence we have what plus be like. So what is like, what was like, what will it be like, what plus be like. And this asks about a general description or something's qualities, qualities. What plus be like for a general description or general qualities. And lastly, we have this sentence, what does Terry's hatchet look like? So this is different from what plus be like, this is what plus look like. This is only talking about a physical description. What you can see. Well, let's practice. Let's again go around using the question word what, and this time Lewis, you can go first. Rosa, yeah. what did you need to bring with you when you went to camp? Uh, I had to bring my sleeping bag and clothes. Monica, what kind of clothes did you bring with you? I brought warm clothes. We went to camp in September. Hmm. Luis, what did, your, what did your brother do when you went to camp? I never went to camp. Hmm, okay. Rosa, what boys did you meet at camp? I met some handsome boys. They were interesting. Monica, yeah? what was your tent look like at your camp? It wasn't bad. Uh, we had a hole in the door flap and when it rained, we had a problem. Oh. Great job, everybody. And now, what do you say about doing a look and listen? 
look and listen. What does the camp manager look like? What was the weather like when you were at camp? What colour is Olive's tent? What were the children roasting over the campfire last night? Read and repeat. Right, well now let's review question words beginning with how. Here are some examples for you. How old is the camp director? How cold is the lake water? How soon can you get oars for the rowboat? How fast can Mary swim? Right, well how is often used with adjectives and with adverbs. But we can also use how in many other ways, as in these examples here. How long? has Nellie been using that sleeping bag? Now in this sentence, how long asks about length of time. How long length of time. Okay, next, how often do you sleep in the hammock? In this sentence, how often refers to frequency. How far is the raft from shore? Okay, in this sentence, how far is asking about distance. Next, we have, how did you carry all of those tents? So how, on its own, just plain old how, asks about manner. Right, two, many, two more sentences. How much was the new lantern? And how many sleeping bags should we bring? How much and how many ask about quantity. Okay, let's do a quick review of these how questions. Lewis, how often do you wish you had gone to camp when you were a kid? Not very often. I spent my time practicing football, now I'm good. Great. And Monica, how far was your camp from home? It was very far. I think my parents wanted to be far away. And when I, when I got homesick, I couldn't come back home. Uh, I see. Uh, Rosa, how did you go to camp? I swam. No, I did. The camp was down the lake from our house. Ah, okay, that must have been great. Uh, right, okay, thank you very much. How about we look and listen? Look and listen. How was the weather at camp? How much did your new axe cost? How old is that target? How hot will it be at camp tomorrow? Read and repeat. Noun clauses. Okay, well now let's look at noun clauses. And before we do this, let's learn what a clause is. A clause is a group of words containing a subject and a verb. It must have a subject and a verb. And there are different kinds of clauses. We have a main clause. Okay, main clause. This is a complete sentence. It doesn't need anything else. It can exist all by itself. It's a main sentence. It has a subject and a verb because it's a clause. And here are two examples of main clauses. We have an, 
works at a camp. And another one is, where is Anne? Now, both these sentences have a subject, Anne, and this is the subject, where, and the verb, works and is. So they are both complete sentences, therefore they are both main clauses. They are called main, sometimes you can call them independent clause. So main clause or an independent clause. Now a dependent clause is not a complete sentence. Dependent clause. And this is not a complete sentence. Okay? It must be connected to a main clause. It cannot be, it cannot exist only on its own. So it must be connected to a main clause. It usually begins with a question word, but it isn't necessarily a question. Let's look at one example here. The camp where Anne works is near a lake. Okay, the camp, the camp where Anne works is near a lake. Now, where Anne works, this is the dependent clause. That's a bit of a funny dependent clause. Okay, it's not a complete sentence. It's not a question. It begins with a question word, but it's not a complete sentence, and it needs to be connected to this, which is the main clause. The camp is near a lake. It's a complete sentence. The camp is near a lake. This is our main clause. Right, it's a sentence. It can be on its own. One more example. When I went to the tent, comma, Ashley was sleeping. When I went to the tent, Ashley was sleeping. Now, when I went to the tent is our dependent clause. And the main clause, you can probably guess this one, Ashley was sleeping. Dependent clause, the D, main clause with an M. Okay, let's practice this now. Does everyone understand what a clause is? Sure. A clause has a subject and a verb. It can be a main clause that is a sentence, or it can be a dependent clause that isn't a sentence. And a dependent clause must have a main clause to be a sentence. Wow. You're really good today, Lewis. Always, what I ha am. What happened? I don't know. Okay. Maybe I fell in love. Maybe you did. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully not with me, though. Uh, no, okay. I hope so. Okay. Monica, what's the main clause, what's the dependent clause in this sentence? I didn't know which camp she was at. Which camp she was at is the dependent clause. Wonderful. What's the main clause in this sentence, Rosa? I heard Ken when he entered the tent. I heard Ken is the main clause. It's a sentence. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so now we understand what main clauses and dependent clauses are. It's time to look at noun clauses, so please take a look at these sentences. I don't know why the oars are missing. Hank couldn't hear what the camp director said. Does Dan know when the new stakes will arrive? Okay, I need some space for this, so let's clean the board. And then we'll look at noun clauses. Okay, a noun clause. A noun clause is a subject, or we can use a noun clause as a subject or as an object. In the first sentence, why the oars are missing. This is a noun clause. And it is the object of the verb, no. I don't know 
why the ores are missing. Okay, the second sentence, what the camp director said. What the camp director said. This is a noun clause, and it is the object of the verb hear. The sentence was, Hank couldn't hear what the camp director said. So this is the object of the verb hear. In the third sentence, when the stakes will arrive, this is also a noun clause, and this is the object of the verb know. Does Dan know when the stakes will arrive? That's the object. Now, in each of these sentences, the noun clause begins with a question word, but it's not a question. In a noun clause, the subject comes before the verb. So that means we don't use question word order. In a noun clause, we don't use question word order. This is not a question. When the stakes will arrive is not a question. The question would be, when will the stakes arrive? So it's not a question. We don't use question word order. Subject comes before the verb. Let's look at some sentences where the noun clause is used as a subject now. Where the camp was surprised me. What the camp director should do is obvious. In the first sentence, this is a noun clause, and in this sentence, it's the subject. It comes before the verb, surprise. Where the camp was surprised me. This is our subject of the verb, surprise. Uh, yeah. And the second sentence, we have what the camp director should do. What the camp director should do. And this is the subject, subject of the verb is. Subject of is. What the camp director should do, subject of the verb is. What the camp director should do is obvious. And remember, a question word is still used to begin the noun clause when it's a subject. OK, let's practice this now. Monica, tell me about your camp director. He was a real nice guy, and Krista really liked him. What he did at the, uh, at the lake uh, really shocked me. He put on a bikini and swam to the raft. Wow, he must have been crazy. Yeah. OK, uh, Lewis, tell me about the camps in Portugal. I don't know who runs them. I have never been to one. OK. Uh, Rosa, how about uh, your director? Who, what, what about him? I never knew who he was. There were about 1,000 children at our camp. It was very big. I guess so. OK. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And what I want you to do now is look and listen. Look and listen. Fred must learn where the grills are kept. Ron couldn't hear what the lifeguard said. Does she know when the new hammocks will arrive? Jack can't see who is in the lake. Read and repeat.
Right, well now let's look at noun clauses which begin with words that aren't question words. Have a look at these sentences, please. Do we need a new raft? Drew doesn't know if we need a new raft. Does that swimmer need help? The lifeguard is wondering whether that swimmer needs help. When a yes-no question is changed into a noun clause, we can use if or whether to introduce that noun clause. Yes or a no question changes into a noun clause. We use if or whether. Okay, we can also use or not. Have a look at this example. Drew doesn't know if we need a new raft or not. Okay, so if we have if plus or not, then or not comes at the end of a sentence. Or not is at the end of the sentence. In this example, we're going to use whether. The lifeguard is wondering whether or not that swimmer needs help. So when we use whether plus or not, the or not can come after whether or at the end of the sentence. Okay, let's practice this now. Let's try making noun clauses with whether or if. Rosa, what was your biggest problem before going to camp? My biggest problem was whether to bring my new clothes or not. If I got a hole in them, my parents would have been angry. Okay, good. Lewis, now I know you never went to camp, so what did you worry about in the summer? Well, uh, some of my friends were from rich families. They went to camp. Um, I never knew if there were going to be enough children to play football with. I see. Monica, what was the worst thing about camp for you? I was always wondering what I would do if it rained. I didn't like art. I didn't like crowds. I was lucky. It was always sunny. Yeah, you were lucky. Good. Thank you very much, everyone. Now, I wonder whether or not we should look and listen. Yes, I think we should. Look and listen. The camp director doesn't know if Melanie is sick. The camp director doesn't know if Melanie is sick or not. George wonders whether Steve can swim to the raft. George wonders whether or not Steve can swim to the raft. Read and repeat. The last thing that we will look at today are noun clauses that begin with that. Here are some examples for you. She has decided that he is a good camp director. I'm afraid that the camp will be closed until June. Yesterday Larry was annoyed that the rowboat had only one oar. I'm sure that the water will be warm enough to swim in. Okay, in the first sentence, let's have a look. So we've got noun clauses with that. In the first sentence, that he is a good camp director. This is the noun clause. 
It's the object of the verb decided. That he's a good camp director, object of the verb decided. Now the second sentence, the noun clause is that the camp will be closed till until June. This is our noun clause, and it's the object of the verb am afraid. Object of am afraid. I hope you can see that. Okay, the third sentence, our, ob our noun clause is that the rowboat had only one oar. That the rowboat had only one oar. And this is the object of the verb was annoyed. Object of was annoyed. And the final fourth sentence, the water will the water will be warm enough to swim in to swim in this is the object of the verb am sure okay now many noun clauses begin with the word that, but sometimes, as in the fourth sentence, the word that can be omitted. We don't need to use it. The sentence was, I'm sure the water will be warm enough to swim in. We could say, I'm sure that the water will be warm enough to swim in, but we don't need to use it every time. Let's have a look at two more examples of that. I'll just make some space. I'm surprised that the children aren't roasting marshmallows. I'm surprised that the children aren't roasting marshmallows. This is our noun clause. We can also say, I'm surprised the children aren't roasting marshmallows. I'm surprised the children aren't roasting marshmallows. We don't need to use that. If we do use that, however, you know that this is the noun clause. The that means the start of the noun clause. Now, noun clauses often come after certain verbs. Let's have a look at some of these verbs that we use with noun clauses. To agree, to feel, to find, to hope, to know, to mention, to realize, to regret, to say, to tell, to think, and to understand. Sometimes the noun clause beginning with that can be the subject of a sentence. Have a look at these sentences, please. That the tent is empty is obvious. That camps are fun is a fact. Now, in these two sentences, the noun clause is the subject. In the first sentence, that the tent is empty is the subject. And in the second sentence, that camps are fun, this is also the subject. However, when the noun clause is the subject of a sentence, we must use that. We cannot start the sentence with, the tent is empty is obvious. It must be, that the tent is empty is obvious. So here we can take that away. But when it's the subject, we must use that. OK, let's practice. Let's practice noun clauses beginning with that. Lewis, what do you think of all-girl camps? I'm surprised that they still have them. I understand that for children, they should be separated. Teenagers want to have fun with boys and girls. Mm, good answer. I know. And Monica, what do you think about having lifeguards at camp? 
I think it is good. I think that it's necessary. Uh, we, don't, we don't want any uh, accidents. Mm, true, good. Rosa, what do you think is necessary at a camp? I'm sure that a good camp director is necessary. I'm afraid that some camps don't have good directors. Mm, very good. Thank you. Now, I'm sure that it's a good idea that we look and listen. Look and listen. I am convinced that summer camp will be good for Bernice. I'm sorry to say Frank stole the hatchet from the camp. Denny was pleased that the children pitched their own tents. We hope that it won't rain for the big campfire tonight. Read and repeat. Review. Okay, it's time for some exercises. Well, this should be easy. Uh, let's fill in the blanks with the correct question word. Uh, Rosa, you can go first. Is it what or where are the targets for the archery range? Where are the targets for the archery range? Good. Where are the targets for the archery range? Monica, this one's for you. Mm -hmm. How many or how much logs do we need for the campfire? How many logs do we need for the campfire? Excellent. How many logs do we need for the campfire? And now, Lewis, one for you. Why or how far is the lake from here? How far is the lake from here? Okay, excellent. How far is the lake from here? Great, let's do one more. Uh, this time, there is no choice. You just have to use your own brains. Mm. Who's going to go first? It's to Monica. Something does the campfire something. What does the campfire need? It needs more wood. Great, okay. What does the campfire need? Okay. Lewis, here's one for you. Something camp should we send Michael to? Which camp should we send Michael to? Fine, good. Which camp should we send Michael to? And Rosa, here's one for you. Something hammock is this. Whose hammock is this? Very good. Whose hammock is this? Thank you very much, everybody. Now let's do another one. Each of you give me two sentences using noun clauses with question words. Lewis, you're a lifeguard. Rosa, you're a camp director, and Monica, you can be a camper. Okay. Okay, Lewis? Um, I don't know how many swimmers are in the water. I don't know when I should put my T-shirt on. Okay, good. Rosa? I couldn't hear what the children were singing at the campfire. I don't know who the next camp director will be. Wonderful. And Monica? I want to know what time we should get up, and I, I need to know who's sleeping back to sleep in. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. And now let's do one more exercise. Let's pretend we're at camp and the weather is bad, okay? And we'll use sentences with if or not, or whether or not. Okay, Monica. I don't know if I should bring my raincoat. Good. Rosa. I can't decide whether to bring extra clothes or not. Okay, good. And finally, Lewis. I want to learn whether it will stop raining. Great job. Okay, one last exercise now. This time, I'll start a sentence for you, and I want you to, s to finish the sentence using that and a noun clause. Rosa, you can go first. It is strange... It's strange that all the campers are in their tents. 
Good. It's strange that all the campers are in their tents. Lewis, one for you. I am hoping. I'm hoping that there are no accidents at the archery range this year. Me too. I'm also hoping that there are no accidents at the archery range this year. And Monica, Kevin is disappointed. Kevin is disappointed that his cousin can't go to the camp with him this year. Okay, fantastic. Kevin is disappointed that his cousin can't go to the camp with him this year. Great job. Thank you very much, Thank everyone. You You're welcome. And now it's time to listen and write. Listen and write. Listen and write the sentences. Number one. Where are the tent stakes? Number two, why aren't we bringing more bows and arrows? Number three, how many bags of marshmallows do we need for the campfire? Number four, what is the new camp director like? Number five, Sheila couldn't decide where to pitch the tent. Number six, we need to know when the children want to swim to the raft. Number seven, where the axe was hidden shocked me. Number eight, Eileen couldn't decide if she should bring a sleeping bag or not. Number nine, Theo wonders whether or not to chop some more wood. And number 10, Andy was amazed that little Ben could use the big axe. Now check your work. Number one, where are the tent stakes? Number two, why aren't we bringing more bows and arrows? Number three, how many bags of marshmallows do we need for the campfire? Number four, what is the new camp director like? Number five, Sheila couldn't decide where to pitch the tent. Number six, we need to know when the children want to swim to the raft. Number seven, where the axe was hidden shocked me. Number eight, Eileen couldn't decide if she should bring a sleeping bag or not. Number nine, Theo wonders whether or not to chop some more wood. And number 10, Andy was amazed that little Ben could use the big axe. Now read the story and answer the questions that follow. Read and answer. Camp Babcock Hovey is a camp for Boy Scouts. Where is Camp Babcock Hovey? It is on beautiful Seneca Lake in central New York. How many Boy Scouts go to Babcock Hovey each year? It's difficult to estimate how many go each year. There are usually between 500 and 600 Boy Scouts there at any given time during the summer. When is the best time to be at camp? It's easy to say when the best time is. It is during the summer months. This year, the big problem is how many weeks the camp should be open. They don't know whether to stay open for three months or four months. They know that in the fall, there aren't many campers. September is a beautiful month in central New York because of the changing colors of the leaves. Whether or not the Boy Scouts would come on the weekend to the camp is unknown. The camp would be very pleased if 100 Boy Scouts could come each weekend in September. They aren't sure where they would let them camp. They would be happy if they could camp near the lake. 
They don't know if they could swim or not, but they would like to fish. A happy camper makes a happy campsite. Well, now listen and answer the questions. Number one, where is Camp Babcock Hovey? Number two, what is difficult to estimate? Number three, when is the best time to be at Babcock Hovey? Number four, what is the big problem this year? Number five, are there many campers in the fall? Number six, why is September a beautiful month in central New York? And number seven, how many Boy Scouts does the camp want to come on weekends in September? Number eight, what isn't the camp sure about? Number nine, where do the Boy Scouts want to camp? And number 10, why do they want to camp near the lake? Now check your answers. Number one, where is Camp Babcock Hovey? It's in central New York. Number two, what is difficult to estimate? It is difficult to estimate how many Boy Scouts go to the camp each summer? Number three, when is the best time to be at Babcock Hovey? Summer is the best time. Number four, what is the big problem this year? The big problem is how many weeks the camp should be open. Number five, are there many campers in the fall? No, there aren't many campers in the fall. Number six, why is September a beautiful month in central New York? It is beautiful because of the changing colors of the leaves. Number seven, how many Boy Scouts does the camp want to come on weekends in September? Well, they would be pleased if 100 Boy Scouts would come each weekend. Number eight, what isn't the camp sure about? They aren't sure where they would let them camp. Number nine, where do the Boy Scouts want to camp? They want to camp near the lake. And number 10, why do they want to camp near the lake? They would like to fish. Okay, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Practicing English. Hey Dave, what are you looking at? Well, I saw this brochure for a scuba diving holiday in the Bahamas. It looks really good, almost too good to pass up. Are you a good scuba diver? I'm not professional, but over the years I've had some really good dives. I really enjoy going beneath the water's surface. It's really peaceful and beautiful down there. Wow, look at that. A week in the Bahamas, diving, including a hotel and airfare, Nine hundred and ninety nine US dollars? Not bad. That's almost too good to turn down. That's what I thought too. Have you ever been scuba diving? Well, I've I've tried it a few times, but I'm no expert. I enjoy diving though. Do you have any vacation time coming up? Yes. What are you thinking? Well, if we get a group interested in going, we could get cheaper rates, especially four or five of us sign up. Good idea. Hey, do you think Bonnie and Carrie might want to go too? We can certainly ask them.
Hey, Carrie. Did you see these brochures on the Bahamas? Look at these images, scuba diving. They're amazing. Yeah. Hey, Monica, Dave and Tarek have left us a note. What does it say? It looks like our boys are cooking up a vacation. Really? Why would they leave us a note? It looks like we've been invited to the party. They want to know if we want to go to the Bahamas with them for a week. Really? Do you want to go? Hmm, I'm not sure. I should think about this. Hey, hey girls. girls. Hey, Dave. Hey. Hello. How Tark? are you guys? Good, and you? Good. Okay. Are you looking at the brochure for the Bahamas? Yeah, it sounds like it'll be a lot of fun. We want to talk it over, though. Sure, we can talk it over. What do you want to know? Well, a week in the sun and playing on the islands sounds really great now. To relax and sip on some tropical drinks would be great. I've never been scuba diving before. What if I just went for some fun in the sun? Well, I guess that would be okay. Okay, let me think it over. I can't sign up right now, but it does sound good. Carrie, do you have any questions? Yeah, can I get along with you three for a whole week? I'm just kidding. It'll be fun to hang out with you guys and not be talking about work all the time. Yeah, if we sign up for this vacation, there has to be one rule. We have to cut out all talk about teaching and school. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Carrie, do you have any other questions before we set out on this adventure? Yeah, I really want to sign up for this trip, but I'm a little short of money. Can I borrow some money from one of you guys? I promise I'll pay back whatever I borrow. Carrie, if you want to come, I would hate to see you called off because you're a little short of cash. How much do you need? Maybe I can chip in a little cash too. I don't want you to drop out of this getaway either. Thanks. That's really nice, guys. Okay, back to you, Monica. How can we get you to say yes to our trip? Well, I know you won't call it off if I don't go, but at the same time, it's going to be hard getting along without you guys. Also, of course, knowing that you were all having a brilliant time without me would also kill me. Okay, so make up your mind and say yes. Come on, look over the facts. You will have us, sun, fun, scuba diving, the islands, sunsets. Please make up your mind and say yes. Well, as usual, you guys have been very persuasive. The thought of you guys in the sunny Caribbean might be too much for me to bear. Come on, Monica. Sitting on the beach or scuba diving? You can't lose. Come with us. Mm, okay, I'll come. Watch, Watch out, out, Bahamas. Bahamas. Here, Here we, we come. come. <laughs>